Welcome, everybody. This is, I can't believe it's, we're talking about November. And uh, if you are anywhere in Ontario, uh, you will have uh, witnessed the extension of summer into the beginning of November until what I believe is today. Today was the first real cold day that we've had. But it just rem reminds us that Christmas and the holiday season is upon us. And we thought we would take this opportunity to help in guide and uh, maybe open up your eyes to opportunities that we see where delivery can actually help you grow your revenue, not only in this coming season, but also into the new year and beyond. And, uh, and we're a little bit biased. We believe that obviously delivery is, um, is an unsung hero when it comes to the retail industry. So we'll just walk you through a few things. What we would love to be able to do is make this interactive as possible. You obviously see the chat on the side of the screen. Um, please post questions there. We have a team behind us that will, uh, that will uh, query all the questions or, and then uh, we can save those for the end. If it's something that's burning, that you have a burning question and you can't stay till the end, please ask it, uh, put a 911 next to it and we'll respond. Uh, we'll, we'll break the train and answer your questions. But the agenda looks like this today. And obviously we're recording this, so just be warned. Um, everything on the screen is being recorded. And that's more for a Loke and I, uh, because we, we don't wanna do anything embarrassing on, on screen. So uh, welcome is where we are. We're going to just talk quickly about Trexity. Uh, we're going to go over quickly um, a little bit of bio about our speakers. And then we're going to dive into the content, which is the eight delivery strategies to grow revenue. Um, and in fact, I, we lie on there. We have nine now. Uh, there was an audible that was added late in the day. And, uh, and so you got to stick around for that one. And then if there's any questions, which I, hopefully there are, we will... Um, endeavor to get to them all. And if not, we can take those offline for sure uh, if we run out of time, which hopefully we won't. All right, so let's let's dive in. Welcome. So I'm just gonna start over again now, okay? <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> That's what the screen says. We just start over. Um, let's talk uh, about Trexity. Uh, Alok, as the, uh, as the co-founder and CEO, why don't you uh, give us an overview uh, of, uh, yeah. of what Trexity is? Yeah. Hit it up. Yeah, for sure. Quick high level. Um, for, for those that are on the call and for those that are using us or, or thinking about using us, we're a last mile logistics platform. Uh, the platform was created or, or conceptualized towards the end of 2018, so oh, pre-pandemic. Um, and the goal here was to empower local merchants. So, you know, the merchants that line uh, the favorite street of your favorite neighborhoods to offer some proponent of, of local same or next day delivery. And, and my background is in e-commerce. And so I would, you know, for the last 16 years, sit with merchants all over the world. And I, I really did start to understand that local delivery was something they didn't really own, right? They were, it was always their product in someone else's box with someone else's logo. And I really wanted to kind of flip that on its head and figure out if there was a way for, for local merchants to truly own their customers' doorsteps in a very intimate way. And so that that is where Trexity was born. Uh, we launched it here locally in Ottawa uh, towards the middle to end of 2019. Uh, and then after working with a couple of local merchants, we quickly started to realize that we, we were onto something special here. Uh, merchants were in love with the fact that they could, on the drop of a dime, focus on their business and not have to worry about getting items to their customers in a, in a timely manner. Um, and so we, we ultimately, you know, with that success came into 2020 with a lot of momentum. And obviously, you know, March 1st, the entire world changed and we were hit with a global pandemic and, and us as a very ambitious startup, we, you know, instead of being down on ourselves for, for, um, I don't want to say ruining, but for, for shortening our, our, our kind of trial period with our merchants, we decided to lock ourselves in my basement for a couple of hours and, and quickly reinvent ourselves. And that's when we started to build these e-commerce integrations. Uh, that quickly allowed us to spread our footprint digitally and continue to allow merchants to keep their doors open during one of the toughest periods in time where, uh, where, where cities were just completely shut down. And so uh, post-pandemic, we really started to understand the problems that we were solving and really started to appreciate how merchants were reacting to having a delivery service like Trexity that we really started to come into our own and, and truly grow the business. And, and I'm very happy to say we are in multiple cities across Canada, uh, working with almost a thousand 
local Canadian merchants uh, in this great country of ours. And now we're in a position where we have learned a ton since 2018 when it comes to how to own your customers' doorsteps and what are the strategies and tips that merchants can use uh, when truly owning this, this piece of their business. And I think that's why we're here today is over the last three Christmases that we've been doing this, we've, we've come across a lot of various use cases. Um, and, and throughout the years, we understand what works best and what doesn't. So, so that's a bit about Trexity and we're, we're super excited to share all of the learnings and by learnings, that's code word for times we've been burnt, uh, with you all here today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like lessons through pain. Exactly. Um, so as we're, we're still working through, uh, with pad, we'll just do a quick, uh, a quick round table introduction. Um, and, uh, obviously, uh, Alok, uh, the uh, co-founder and CEO, uh, it was his vision around a dining room table that brought this, uh, this company to light. Uh, what was that? 2018, early 2018, uh, for you, yeah. for you. Yeah. 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 It was, uh, shortly after I, I stepped away from Shopify and uh and did it with uh with our two other co-founders who are, are not on on the webinar today but Mattia bouchard and darren schnare my my brothers from another mother my rider dies uh we, we we it all started just across the hall here from where i'm standing today in my dining room over a bottle of cognac and so that's that's kind of <laughs> uh the starting of where this took place on a sunday night and uh and we're, we're we're extremely pleased to see where we've come and and at the end of the day guys that's that's because of our merchants right we've we've built something that that is needed uh it's being demanded and we're delivering no pun intended and uh, that's why we're here today but I'm super <laughs> excited to to be on this with all of you guys we are just crushing the pun so far rob this is this is totally oh, it's gonna be many more somebody's <laughs> got to do a counter for delivery puns in a day um and i'll i'll step in uh i'm rob I, and i am the coo and as i like aloka likes to remind me i was the first cost center of trexity so i was the very first employee that came on board and the very first expense in the company um and uh and that was just over two years ago uh, I come, my background is entrepreneurial, but it, it's really significant that I, almost, I spent almost three years inside of Lyft, uh, the rideshare company, and it was on the founding team here, uh, bringing it into Canada uh, with, uh, we opened up Toronto, Ottawa, and Vancouver, and, uh, and really dove into the logistics side. And that's really where, uh, where I play inside of, inside of Trek City. Um, and then, and Pat, once he's on, he will tell you that, uh, he is, uh, he's the owner of, uh, La Bottega de Caspro in, uh, the Byward market. And, uh, and he is, uh, this is one of, I would say at the heart of our city of Ottawa, his business is the heart of the heart. Uh, it has been around for, I think three decades now. And, uh, and it is, uh, it is right. It oversees. The entire byword market, uh, Pat, is uh, well known in the city, well known in the community, and uh, and well known because of the way that he innovates around retail. Uh, he, he, I'm I'm fairly certain there isn't another business that does as much per square foot uh, than they do, um, and uh, and we hope to bring him on to be able to uh, help him or help you understand how he's leveraged deliveries. But uh, but Pat is uh, it. If, if La Bottega is, is the heart of the viral market, Pat is the heart of, of La Bottega. Um, and so this is who you've got. This is who you're stuck with for the next little while. And we're going we're gonna to roll into some of the content now. So let's jump into the eight delivery strategies to grow your revenue. And, uh, and we'll, we'll walk through these. They're, they're easy. They're numbered. They're broken down into sections. And the very first section that we like to talk about is getting logistics out of the way. One of the biggest challenges that companies have when it comes to deliveries is thinking that they have to be a logistics company and they are not. So we always label this as like, get it right out of the way. We do, you do not need to become logistics experts to do deliveries. For those of you that have used us or used our services, you know that it should be easy. And that's what these next uh, strategies are to help you get logistics out of your way. So the first one is, is really simple. It is about, if you haven't done this already, it is uh, of utmost importance that you do this right now. Uh, you know, you threw a, um, a challenge. Oh, is that Pat? We'll bring him in. 
if, if I can actually bring Pat in and he can do a, a, a real introduction. Pat, we're bringing you in now. Perfect. See what happens. As you, as you do this and bring Pat in, I, I, yeah, outsourcing delivery is, is an important one. Um, but, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna err on the side of merchants here because when you ask a, a business that has been around for many years, many decades and ask them to change the way that they're doing business, it's always a tough, it's a tough pitch, right? And, and a lot of businesses are, are, are like to keep things internal. Right. They want to make sure that they're profitable, that they're lean. And one of the things about outsourcing deliveries is, you know, you can do it with with a with a, a national carrier like a Canada Post or FedEx. Right. But at the end of the day, um, you have to understand who it is that you're servicing and 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 how you're doing that and understand that you as a business aren't a logistics company. Right. You are a retailer or you are a bakery or you are a grocery store and that is your primary focus. And, and I, I love this concept of outsourcing because at the end of the day, you probably outsource other things, right? Like you'll outsource your accounting software to an accountant or into it QuickBooks and do it yourself, or you'll, uh, you'll outsource your, your inventory management service to someone else. But it's funny when we talk about delivery is why wouldn't you also do that? Right? Why would you try to do your own deliveries as a business instead of, focusing on running your business and it's funny we've we've come across rob and i've come across hundreds of merchants that you know i was out in winnipeg and calgary and talking to local merchants and they said well no we do our deliveries every friday and it's it's a part of our service and i said how long are you on the road for some of these merchants say well you know it's not that bad it's like four to five hours <laughs> i said i said that's a that's a really long time it's a long time to be away from running your business and think about what you could do in that four to five hours and, and, uh, and when we started to get those businesses to understand the value of time that they are, that they are wasting away from their business, it was, uh, it was incredible to see the shift, right? They, 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 they obviously thank us much later once they transferred over it and started to realize how much time they got back in a day. But, but I think that that's a great segue to open up this poll question. Uh, and I don't know if we want to put it out now, but for the people that are on the call, for the merchants that have joined us, um, do you do your own deliveries? Yes or no? Um, I, I'd like to know who does their own deliveries and, and open it up and see what the feedback's like, because um, we still come across a ton of merchants that try to do their own deliveries. And and one of the things that I'm reminded of, and, and for any of you who haven't seen, there's a, a fantastic documentary on Bill Gates on Netflix. It came out a while back. But in that documentary, he talks about there's one thing that he has in common with the rest of the world, and that is no infinite amount of time. We all have the same amount of time in a day. And when you try to prioritize the things that you need to do to move your business forward or succeed as a personal individual, it's time is what you need in order to achieve the goals that you have set out for yourself. And unfortunately, if you are sitting in your Honda Civic like I do doing deliveries in a very busy time when I'm trying to run a business, it's it's hard to succeed. So it's a 50-50 split right now. Um, Rob, I'll let you chime in. And Pat, welcome to the party, big guy. Um, and and if Pat, if you, I know your camera's not on, but if you can unmute, I would love to get the merchant's perspective on the impact in outsourcing deliveries. For those of you who don't know, Pat does have delivery vehicles, okay? Like he's got these gorgeous Labotega little trucks that you can see running around town. But at the end of the day, Pat still chose to outsource deliveries. And there's a reason why he did this. So Pat, if you're able to unmute, um, would love to get your, your perspective. And in case you need help doing that, it's just on the bottom of the screen. There, there you go. He there he is. Hey, oh no, we can't hear him. We can see him, we can't hear him. It, it, hopefully Pat has his IT team there helping to fix him up. But once we can hear you, Pat, <laughs> Pat is a perfect example of this because you know, when the pandemic hit is when, is when Pat signed on to be a Trek City merchant. And it, it was really interesting because we spoke on the phone and I knew he had delivery vehicles. And I said, Hey, Pat, what can we do to help you? And, and he instantly started to, to, to diversify his business, right? He understood the value of owning his customers' doorsteps, not just with caterings, but with everything else, right? 
Patty, can you not yet? Okay, I'll keep going because your story is incredible and I'll let you chime in when you do unmute. But um, Pat, as a, as a business owner and as an entrepreneur, he quickly realized, listen, I, we're not going to continue to blow up the business if it's just caterings because you know what? Those businesses are now closed. Those caterings are not going to start. They're not going to happen like they used to. And so Pat was very smart and said, what can I now do and how can I leverage this service that I'm going to agree to outsource to to now own my customers in a very different way. And for him, it was local delivery. And he said, Alok, let's, let's throw all of our SKUs on our website. Let's now ingest orders online. Let's ingest orders through email, through phone. We'll aggregate them. And every day we are just gonna pummel Trexity with hundreds of deliveries and get out to the world. And what's really interesting about that is not only did he then commit to outsourcing his deliveries to a platform that could handle the volume, but also handle the customer service, right? And so for those of you who haven't been to La Bottega, when you walk in there, it is a, it is not like walking into a, a Loblaw superstore, okay? This is a very unique shopping experience, as are <laughs> most of the brands can that are on. You didn't well, hear we me now. Hear you Sorry back. about that, guys. You're super clear. I'm going to let you take it away because the story of when Bottega came on a trusty and where you've come today. Okay. Is, yeah. Is Again, incredible. I apologize for that. Um, the story is, is fantastic. I, uh, I was, it, it, it basically started during COVID. We, uh, we were doing our own deliveries. Like uh, Alok said, we had two trucks on the road, but um, we were selling online and we were not pushing stuff online for one simple reason. We could not get the stuff delivered. It was always an issue. We had drivers, um, you know, they wouldn't show up. Uh, we couldn't find enough people with their driver's license. So we just kept the online business very simple and uh, basically did not push it at all. When, uh, when COVID hit, we needed that source of revenue. And um, it, was the perfect, it was the perfect timing because all of a sudden, uh, you know, I met a few times with you, Alok, and I told you our issues and, and, and bang, it came on right away. Uh, we could finally, we could finally get our goods delivered fast, efficiently, and with technology. And that was the issue. We had no technology. It was basically put your address in and we'll call you when we can uh, deliver it. Uh, the technology behind it that, that you brought to the table just changed everything for us. Um, I'd say the, the, our online sales grew, you know, 20, 30 times than what we were doing before. And, uh, and basically, we there's no way we would have had that business going without uh, without you guys. That's great, Pat. But you know what I love about everything you just explained is when our drivers and I'm going to tell you guys early days, I'm in the back of Pat's grocery store and I'm doing deliveries, right? Because the only way that this platform got to where it is today is by listening to the needs of our merchants. And so Pat wasn't just a customer; he was a a source of input for us to get better as a company. But one thing, and this is kind of onto our, our second point here past outsourcing deliveries is, is, is I always, you'll hear me say this a lot, but owning the customer's doorsteps, Pat and Bottega nailed it because when you go to pick up a package, it is in a gorgeous reusable La Bottega bag with the La Bottega colors and logo squarely positioned on, on the bag. And that is what shows up at your doorstep. It's not a Canada Post red and white affixed label, right? With the Canada Post uh, packing tape on it. Pat really went above and beyond with his team and said, okay, listen, we've got this unique opportunity. We can own our customers' doorsteps. Now let's, let's really own it. And they did right? And so everything had their brand on it. It was the experience as if you were in the store, right? The bag would show up at your house and it's like, wow, you, you just went through the checkout and it's here for you. And, um, and I think that was incredible. And, and I want to ask you this question, Pat, but like, how would you have delivered baskets and wine, right? It, you already have a massive operation and imagine having to wrap those, those baskets with Canada post. Yeah, it was, right? it was, an, it was really a nightmare guys. I mean, there was a Canada, there's a Canada post station right next to us and we hated it. It was so much work bringing them stuff there and just dealing with them. You don't know when it's going to be delivered. Even if it had tracking, it was, there was, it was never an easy process. Uh, the difference is this is easy. This is so easy. You guys have made it print out a label package it perfectly and someone's there. And I mean, you could tell by the way I am with technology, 
uh, I'm not very great with it. So <laughs> for us, having this technology at, at our fingertips was incredible. For it was it was mind blowing because it, you made it seamless. And uh, yeah, we 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 asked actually it took our business to a new level, uh, especially with gift baskets. Like we sell thousands of gift baskets in the holiday season, and you know there were days that we had you guys. Okay, we have a hundred baskets going out today. And uh, before we just, we actually, we, 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 we made, we, we wanted customers to pick them up because it was too hard to deliver. Now the delivery, the flat fee we charge, it's, there's, there's a, it's a no brainer. You know, we had no idea what it was costing us to deliver a basket before our driver would be out for sometimes an hour, two hours. And the costs were, we just never knew what they were. You know, you had to pay gas, you had to pay a driver. They, they get lost. The customer didn't know where we were. It's all gone. All that stuff is gone. So, yeah, I, I don't really know how we did it before, but now we, we do it and we push it. And delivery is just a, an important part of our business that, that's almost been perfected. And, you know, and that's great, Pat. Thanks for sharing that. What I love here locally in Ottawa is that now Pat's been doing the gift baskets. A couple, we have a couple Christmas seasons under our belt now. And it's funny, throughout the year, um, I'll run in, I'll go to a gala or we'll go to a fundraiser, the snowsuit fundraiser. And they said, oh, look, we're looking forward to getting our Bottega basket because we know you'll be <laughs> delivering it. And, and it's great. It's like, you know, it's local helping local. And I think that's really important. Now, Pat, you said something really interesting around technology and not being the most tech savvy person in the world. And, and me growing up in this city and always being deeply rooted at La Bottega, getting my sandwiches for lunch growing up. Um, I always knew you guys had a website. But the site was dormant for quite some time, right? Not a whole lot of products on there. It was always kind of the same placeholders. Now, you got really smart about adding a ton of SKUs during the pandemic and getting that involved. But this is over to the next point is offering that delivery during the checkout process, okay? And so what Pat and his team decided to do is they said, let's now provide shipping options when someone is going through our online checkout. And during that checkout experience, the shipping option will be same day local. They can pick the time, the date of when they want it delivered, and it's all powered by Trexity. And so what's really cool about this is Pat, and I have to give props to his team uh, that is behind him, Larissa and Sarah. Uh, they basically went ahead and through our integration, they changed the buying habits of their customers because the customers were now saying, I want it on Thursday at 2 p.m. and bring it to my door. And all of that was built into this incredibly beautiful checkout experience that they created with Shopify and Zapier and Trexity and all these great vendors to build this experience. Now, Pat, talk to me a little bit about that. Like having your customers now have another place to go to buy product being the online experience and then not having to worry about how are we going to fulfill it or who's going to do it? And like, what did that so, feel like for you guys? And how did that I mean, change the it? checkout experience and with your partners, they've made it so easy and seamless. Um, we have customers now ordering groceries every week, a few times a week, and they've, you know, they've stopped coming in the shop because it's become so easy and they realize the value, you know, they save on parking, they save on gas and they save on their time. Uh, you know, we, we also have the option that we now, they can, you know, we have over, you know, I think 4,000 products in our store. They're not all on our website. The beauty is they can send us an email order. We, we process the order ourselves and then we plug it into Trek City same way. And we pick the time, we pick the day and it goes out. Uh, it's been seamless payment, times, everything. Um, yeah, uh, it's a, it, it, what, what has happened right. is there's new streams of business. Like the grocery business is, 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 a, is something that it's done every day. The basket and holiday stuff is a huge, it's a different thing. And uh, they're both very important, but we wouldn't be able to build uh, as much holiday traffic and push our stuff like we do. And now wine, wine is another thing we've, we've talked about. You know, wine is, is just been able, this is only the last year, year and a half since COVID that they've allowed us to sell wine with our, with our special license. And, uh, and yeah, it's, a, it's another big thing. You could not get wine delivered locally as fast as we can do it. And now you can add it in a gift basket. Um, yeah, so this is huge, you know. It, it's something that uh, some of the, even the big boys aren't ready. They, they can't do it yet. And we've, a small guy like us, has figured it out and, and figured a way to do it and with, with the help of you guys. 
Oh, that's great, Pat. Thank you. No, it's uh, it's one of those tips for merchants, right? It's it's trying to find a new proponent to do business. And, and through local delivery, it opens up a multitude of ways that you can do this, whether it's, you know, your core business, building a subscription model, capitalizing like Pat did on the gift bats this season. I know we've got some people from Just Give Baskets here, like it's a no brainer, right? And and uh, and and it gives you as a merchant the confidence to go and, and maybe do some corporate orders, right? Because you know, you've got this service backing you up 24 seven with support and no cutoffs. And that's that's the next point I want to talk about. And you hear this in the news as you approach, um, you know, December timeframe and and Canada Post will put it on the news and says, you know, make sure all your orders are in before December 12th if you want to get it on Christmas. And and we actually say the reverse to our Trek City merchants and we say our cutoff is December 24th at 6 p.m., right? And it's funny because every year Pat will call me on the 23rd without fail. He goes, well, look, listen, I hate to drop this on you, but tomorrow I've got like 375 baskets. I said, Pat, it's December 24th. We're ready. Yeah. Let's go. Right? He's almost sometimes waiting for me to be like, yeah. oh, Pat, I don't know. But without hesitation, we do it. And we tell all of our merchants, take orders up until the day before Christmas. Make an impact on the Christmas season with your local deliveries, right? We're supporting local merchants. Everybody on this call is a local merchant. This is the time for you to benefit from the economic output of the holiday season, right? Some businesses that I talk to say, oh, look, we depend on it so much that it helps us during the slow lulls of the summer or the February, you know, downtime. We really need to capitalize as much as we can. And so what I want to tell you all here today, this is point number four, and this one is my favorite. Communicate this to your customers. We will deliver up until December 24th, 6 p.m., even 8 p.m., right? Open up that, that addressable market in which you can sell to. Don't force them to get their deliveries in by the 12th. Tell them that you have all the time in the world. And you know what? Those other merchants that tell them that they have to have those deliveries or those orders in by December 12th, that's who you're marketing to, right? And so I, I want to ask everybody, this is the next poll. I think some people started answering, but when do you cut off your holiday deliveries, right? Is it December 24th? And I'm assuming if you're doing your own deliveries and you're, you're a business owner, you're going to take orders in as, as close to, to, to Christmas as you can. And we understand the needs of our merchants. And that's why we've chosen to deliver up until Christmas Eve. It's, it's, uh, it's huge. Rob, are you back with us? I, I feel yeah. like I'm. <laughs> You're standing alone. Well, I, it's always a good question to to ask around around this. Is like Canada Post cuts off uh, about twelve days prior to the holidays, and 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 two things happen around the holidays. One is that cutoff, and so as a as a merchant, Pat, as this is your business, what does twelve days worth of selling mean to you guys when it comes to the holiday season, especially? And this is a stereotype, but especially if you're a guy. And you do your Christmas shopping on December twenty fourth, right? Like it, it's you're missing a, a, a huge demographic. Those are or if, if by you, far if those last that, right? twelve days are our biggest days, by far. Yeah. So, so you, you cut them off. That's what Canada Post does. And every big delivery company, even if you're doing local deliveries, the cutoff is the twelve or, or twelve days prior. And then we we one of the huge advantages of local delivery, and we're not talking about national, just local delivery, is that we go to your door, we pick up the package from you, and then we go directly to your customer. So we don't hold things overnight. There's no risk of it getting lost. There's no uh, warehouse that it stores in. And we hear nightmares of people that have that ordered at the beginning of December and mid to late January, they haven't received their product yet. And we know that when the day is done, our cars are clean. There's no more product left in the car. We deliver until everything is done. And that's one of the huge advantages of, of being able to deliver up until Christmas Eve. Uh, you, you don't lose The other money. issue is uh, damaged products. Like it, it doesn't happen. Yeah. I, well, it doesn't happen often, not that I know about, but you know, with Canada Post, we would always get a call. Well, this is broken now. This came in frozen. This was, uh, there were problems all the time. We don't have those problems anymore. The, the product is picked up and like you said, and within an hour it's there or within 20 minutes sometimes. And we don't have, we don't have that problem. There was always damages and broken stuff. We had to buy insurance. We were always making insurance claims. We've never had that problem. 
you know, the, the stuff, you know, the drivers are, are very careful. We put a fragile sticker and there you can see they're very careful. And we know that the guy that's picking it up is the guy that's delivering it. That's the other issue. When it was going to Canada, we don't know. Yeah. They were throwing around stuff. You don't know where the, what's happening in those boxes. They're going into conveyor belts and all these kinds of things. That's not happening. They're getting picked up and they're getting delivered. And that's what we loved. We did not have any more damaged product. We could send something, not worried that, you know, in the winter months, if it was kept overnight in a truck, the next day the stuff was frozen. That's not happening. Right. So. Huge. Well, that kind of leads into what you did and what Aloka talked about early on, which was this, this need to, or this ability to launch new products. Now, a lot of uh, what you did was bending towards what the pandemic was feeding you, right? So when everybody's in lockdown and shutdown, you, have to, you had to modify your business during that time. But what ended up happening became a sustainable business for you, as well as the physical retail. Now you did, I mean, for your example, you started doing baskets. Like if you've ever seen the production of baskets at La Bottega, it's, it's remarkable. Like they rent an entire different location. And when you go and visit it, it is just wall to wall baskets. And, and this is, this is uh, strategy number five is to, is to launch new product offerings. It seems so simple to do. And uh, there's nothing like a pandemic to force you down that path. But what we're, we're not talking about, uh, you know, products that don't target your existing customers. It's brand new products that leverages your inventory or leverages your customer base or makes it convenient for your customer to buy from you at any given point in time and then have it delivered. Pat, you, like, uh, it was a remarkable thing because you converted your restaurant in the back of the store into one of the greatest wineries and wine stores with very, very, very hard to get um, authentic Italian wines and, and started delivering those. And you started doing um, uh, gift baskets and, and prep food. Ba like it just, you changed the way you did your business. And uh, what was that experience like for you? And then how is that maintained as, as the, you know, we've emerged out of the so, pandemic? Yeah, you're right. We, we, we have many hats at Bottega. So uh, some of the new things that we started doing were, uh, you know, we're, we've always been strong. Our catering department's been strong. But what we started doing is developing packaging that could be, shipped and, uh, and, and delivered easily without, without issue. And uh, we started developing the charcuterie boxes and we, we made custom boxes for perfectly that the, the food would fit perfectly. And even if it was moved gently, nothing would move. And that's huge. So that's become one of our number one selling items, this charcuterie box. And you can, you know, and we have those on subscription model now. I mean, that was something we, we started this year. Thanks to, uh, thanks to you guys, you kept pushing us to do it. And we did it. And uh, yeah, the subscriptions are building and we're seeing that now people are giving those as gifts. And I mean, it's going to help. It's, it's more deliveries for you guys and it's more business for us. So that's a new item that we net. This is the first year that's happening. And we're starting to see the sales on those grow. Now uh, the catering, like I said, you know, the deliveries are done within an hour. It's perfect. We have these charcuterie boxes. We've, we've made them. So they're perfect. We put a shipping label right on top and they open the box and it's 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 ready to go and these are stuff we could never do we would never ship um the, all these streams have remained everything we started with covid has remained have some of them grown yeah uh, and some of them softened a bit after covid yes but they're we're not getting rid of any of them they're all here to stay and uh, it's all extra business and yeah it's important business to us and i don't know what we do without it to be honest now the the market I, I Being love downtown that. has changed. Any downtown business knows that we've lost some, we've lost some people. We've lost people that work downtown. So we had to figure out ways to get that business back, not walking into our physical stores. And this is, this is the way we've got it back. Well, I also remember during, during the occupation that happened here in Ottawa in the winter, um, I mean, you were impacted by that as well. And they closed off the byward market and our drivers would, would walk that last half a kilometer to go and pick up the boxes so that you can get the product at the door. And, yeah. uh, and it, during like winter in Ottawa and, and you know well, what that's like. And that's just it. You guys are here for those special moments. Like nobody thought that occupation was going to happen, but all of a sudden we were ready and it was, we offered free delivery. That was huge. That was probably our biggest, uh, biggest with Trek city, free delivery. I mean, we don't do it all the time. We charge our customers and they gladly pay. But when we offered free delivery, um, 
it went insane. <laughs> yeah, I, you guys know it was, it was like it, it was gangbusters. It was, I remember. Yeah, so it. I mean, there was nobody coming to the store because they couldn't get in because the convoy was there. But we were sending out food from morning to night, and uh, our customers yeah. appreciated it and they wanted to to support us. But if we didn't have you guys available, there was no way we could have done it. So. Uh, you know, in the pinch, sometimes in life and business, things just happen. So when you're ready with uh, with a service like this, you you can you can still manage it and you can still survive. And you know, things like this actually helped us pay the bills and helped us keep grocery moving. And you know, we we have a huge social media following, so we had to move some stuff and we put a a, a thing out there and tell people, you know what, it's free delivery. Bang! They just supported us, and the local community was amazing. And you know, and I called you guys, guys, I need some help here. What can we do? And like, let, let's do this. Let's do that. And you guys helped us out. And yeah, that, that I won't, I won't forget that, that phone call. Pat, Pat says to me, look, there's barriers at both sides of the street, but I've talked to the cops and only Trek city drivers are allowed through. And I was yeah. like, of course, yeah. Pat, of uh, they course did. Oh, yeah, they, did. They, they, they kept the, they kept the deliveries moving. So, and yeah, everybody was yeah. nice about it and they tried to help, but even your drivers, I mean, they figured it out and they get there and they'd say, I parked a block away. You know, they didn't know to ask a police officer, I'm, I'm going to see Bottega. Yeah. They would park and they'd come and get the stuff and they'd walk back and it worked out. It was, uh, yeah. And I mean, that wasn't planned. That was just like at the moment, all of a sudden streets are closed. What are we going to do? Streets are closed for, we didn't know how long. What are we going to do? Wait a second. Let's offer free delivery. Bang. It just went blockbuster. So. That's awesome. That fits well to this next piece here, Alok. Yeah, is, uh, is, is, is adding more to your customer's basket size and offering free delivery, right? It's, we talk about the multitude of ways that you can use Trexity, right? And whether that's through the online experience, whether that's through an in-store experience and having your customers look around the store and then say, hey, listen, I wanna walk around the Byward market with these bags in my hand. Can you just have them delivered to my house, which is a new model that we've been testing works really well. Now, one of the things is, is getting customers to spend X amount of dollars and say, hey, listen, if you spend you know, this will give you free delivery. It doesn't just have to be because of an occupation or a pad. I didn't want to bring up a sore spot, but a broken water main, which happened right after the yeah. occupation for Pat. Pat calls me. He's like, I can't catch a break alone. Water main breaks on, on, on right in front of his store. He can't open his doors. And once again, we got to get deliveries out. Right. But what we're finding with, with a lot of merchants do is they'll say, listen, come on in, get your panettones, get what you need for the Christmas. And you know what, because you did, uh, delivery is on us. And so Pat, what are your thoughts there around pushing higher spend and providing free delivery? And, 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 and right now is a very unique time, right? Uh, inflation's quite high. Interest rates are high. Gas prices are high. A lot of people are afraid to leave their homes, right? It, it costs a lot of money to hop in your car, drive around town, do all your Christmas shopping. It's not like it used to be. Um, but now, businesses like yourself are getting very smart around saying, Hey, listen, we'll t spend 150 bucks deliveries on us. What, what are your thoughts there? And how do you I, think that? I can't help? tell you how much free delivery, uh, changes, changes things for, for, for business. It, it customers just love it. So for us, that was a huge, huge growth. Uh, I mean, we can't, we can't do it, but what I'll say is, Deliveries don't really cost us anything anymore. The, the customer pays. We have a flat fee. We know our size. If I could offer free delivery on a promotion, I know that that's gonna, it's gonna be gangbusters. If I have something special going on that I can make enough margin that I can cover the delivery, it's a no brainer. Um, it, it, cha it changes everything. And, and we, we saw it firsthand. The deliveries went up 10, 10 times as soon as you said free delivery and customers still ask when you're doing free delivery again but even if you don't get free delivery for us we give a flat fee you know that we give a flat fee sometimes it's a little more yeah. sometimes a little less than our flat fee in the end it works out with it's it's uh it's 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 revenue neutral so this was never a case for us we had no idea what we we're spending on deliveries so right now it's revenue neutral basically the customer has a flat fee they're okay paying a flat fee too if they know. But you, yeah. 
you said something that's really important though, that, Pat, is that, is that uh, I mean, we have a belief here that delivery should never be on the burden of the merchant, uh, which I, we think that a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of customers feel that, that the merchant should pay for delivery and delivery is ultimately an expense. And, and really, the, you said it very well, is that when you see a product where you know the margins are going to be there and you can offer free delivery because it'll increase your, your revenue as a result of that and you can absorb that, that delivery fee, then do it. But it shouldn't be commonplace. And you, you do it from the get-go. You've always charged delivery and, and because there's a value to that. And we believe that wholeheartedly that delivery, when it's done properly, is a premier experience. Uh, you know, when you when you receive it, that's the most important thing. You want to receive it on the day that you purchase it. You want it in the packaging that it left the store in. Um, and, and and there's value in the delivery. And it should only be free if you as a merchant seize the opportunity to to not lose money on those deliveries. I think that's the key. And 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 you can there's a whole bunch of strategies we can talk about in Q and A or after that can help increase basket size. Uh, or increase, grow your sales as a result of, of uh, free delivery. Free delivery should not just be the norm. And, and you, your example is perfect around uh, the occupation of Ottawa, is that when you put it out there, it was well received. And it, so it should never be the norm. It should only be uh, there to help grow, grow revenue. Um, but to talk about the revenue and the delivery with like, it was honestly a nightmare trying to figure out how much deliveries cost, how much do we charge? Right. You guys have made it easy. Uh, the, the, you see how much it's costing you at that moment. So for us, you yeah. know, and, 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 and we know where it's going out. I don't have to worry if this driver is going to get stuck in traffic. I don't have to worry that he's, I need him in the store. We all know how hard it is to get staff right now. So how, by you knowing my cost, knowing what it's going on and knowing that it's going to get there and I can track it. If it's not there, I can see exactly where it is. It's it's an unbelievable benefit. So I know my costs. I know exactly what things are costing me. Unfortunately, when I try to do my own deliveries, I do not know that stuff, and it's uncontrollable. <laughs> it's it's uncontrollable. So you guys have made it controllable. It is. I love it. I love it. Well, I mean, it it really does. You showed us this very clearly the way that you handled your very special product that you had in the store during the pandemic. Um, specifically around wine. And uh, I remember an old boss of mine uh, buying olive oil, uh, you know, this tiny little bottle of olive oil from, from your store. And he, he, he prized, it was a prized possession that he, he was showing everybody at the office. And we had no idea what he was talking about. He, he was, uh, he's Italian and, and uh, but you have these, these exclusive products that people wait for. And I, I love this concept of, of you yourself said you had this, an incredible uh, social media following uh, I believe that every business should have their own mailing list and stay in touch with all of their customers. You should own that customer the way that, that you do when they come into the shop. And, and why not extend that? Why not find product that you know that would be of interest to them during this holiday season and only offer it through these channels, through either social media channels or through your email list, where you can, you can offer a limited time or exclusive product that it's only available for delivery. It's not available in the store, on the shelves. It creates this exclusive club that your customers are in. It runs out. There's only a limited number of them. And it, these things could be seasonal. For you guys, it could be a bottle of wine that's very unique that you're bringing in. But it's only available outside of the normal facility, which is the website or um, your e-commerce store or your store. It's all done through your email or social media. And it's exclusive to your brand. It would. It is an incredible opportunity to surprise and delight them, and then create this exclusionary component of retail—a higher experience for retail. Um, I love that. I think the only caveat when it comes to this type of stuff is never surprise a customer with a delivery. We run into this issue all the time: is that when somebody buys a gift for somebody and they don't tell them, and it's being delivered, they always reject us at the door. They say we're not expecting a delivery, and then we return it. And you do not want that. So it's, it, although a surprise is a surprise, you want to make sure that they know that a delivery is coming. Um, yeah. So it, it's a strategy and we can talk about this in the Q and A. I just want to make sure that we get through all of these. It's my job to be the time police. Sorry. Um, but it is uh, offering a limited time or exclusive product only available through delivery can help you grow your business and grow, grow the deepen the relationship with your customer at the end of the day. 
All right, here's here's a a, a little uh, a gimme here, uh, and and Pat mentioned it as well. And and this is an optional thing to earn from every delivery. Now, uh, if you have a, a local partner like Trek City who's doing your local delivery, who charges a flat rate based on uh, on distance from your store, um, there's an opportunity to earn off of that uh, delivery as well. Uh, th there's there's an opportunity to cover your costs of your employee time for packaging. So if we charge seven dollars or nine dollars for delivery, you can charge eight and 10. And we've seen this happen really easy, uh, often um, in, in very busy times where you, you do want to get as many deliveries as possible, but you also want to make sure that, that uh, everybody's efficient with their deliveries, that they're not just ordering uh, things that they can pick up locally. You want to make sure that, that the delivery is, is an experience and you can earn off of that experience. Earn a dollar just earn a dollar, earn 50 cents, earn 10 cents. It doesn't matter, but there's an opportunity on every delivery to take a dollar off of it or, or just to earn a little bit from it. Uh, a lot of merchants frown on this, but I always think that if, if there's a, an appetite, there should be some kind of delivery costs, not only from A to B, but the prep time inside of your store. And you have to take that into consideration when you're doing your delivery. So why not take a dollar off it? I don't know, is that controversial to take a buck? Uh, from a delivery or earn a buck or try to break even with your ops cost. What do you think, Pat? I mean, at one point before you do answer, I think, I don't think so. You know why? Because if the business is the smart one that decided to go with Trexy, so they should be benefiting from it. That's just my, right. I know, I know people at Trexy, so I'm a little biased. I'm going to say, no, I'm happy breaking even. I don't want to make money on deliveries and I don't want my customers to make, think I'm making money on deliveries. So I am happy losing a little bit if I have to, or break even because the service and what it's done for me, it saved me money. So I actually do earn from every delivery with not taking it from the customer because I've saved money. So that's, that's awesome. the way I earn from every delivery. Yeah. So yeah. we got another poll up right now. So would you want to earn from deliveries? Yeah. Let's see. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you can. And, and uh, Trexity just recently went to a flat rate in every city. And, uh, and I mean, as the distance grows, the flat rate will, will increases a little bit and you can see that on the website, but, uh, but with that flat rate, you have predictive, um, revenue or delivery costs. And so you can look at it and say, maybe, maybe this makes sense for us to do it. It depends on how much effort it takes to get into getting the deliveries done. All right. Our last piece is, is trying to increase for your future revenue. And there's just one tip. This is the extra tip here where I think that it's an often overlooked uh, uh, small component that every retailer or every merchant can do. Uh, and that we talked a little bit about this when it came to, um, there's opportunities to earn when it comes to say subscriptions, is you're selling subscriptions during the holiday season, you're selling 12 months of subscriptions. I, my advice to you is collect that money up front. Don't do it on a monthly, just collect it all up front, uh, like you do with a software as a service. You get a better price if you pay up front instead of monthly. It's just recognized revenue that you hold in your hand and it's a commitment. Nobody can cancel. Nobody cancels on something that they've, that they've paid up front or very few do. So there's those kinds of things where you introduce the subscriptions at the beginning of the season and it carries through. So you're giving somebody a wine subscription, a cheese subscription that is once a month that goes through the whole year. It's the greatest way to keep reaching out to those customers. But here, here's something that is often overlooked. And when Alok mentions this, uh, it, it often, we ask all the merchants and they often look at us like, yeah, of course we should be doing that. Why aren't we doing that? What are we thinking? Is, is just stupid little inserts, stupid little inserts. You're going through the effort of packaging stuff up, putting it in a nice branded bag for your customer and you're putting the product in there and then you're just putting a label on it and sending it out. For the love of God, Put a menu, put a, Slide, something, yeah. like just up, man. anything that, that, that promotes your business, anything. And it can be just a, a catalog. It can be something that draws, it could be a special. I mean, uh, this is, I'm stealing this from Old Navy. You go into Old Navy at Christmas time. They say, okay, we're busy enough. Here's a coupon for January. Come in after January 15th and, here, and it's only valid. Do that. Do that because you have their cap, you, you have captivated them by sending them the product they open the package and look here's what there's a whole bunch of swag in there to include it I, I it's often forgotten it's crazy to think about the missed opportunities of that engagement alok 
It drives I you crazy it, when you see it. Oh, like, man, oh. I say it all the time. And I, and this is just local merchants. I mean, we're, we're, we're you know, thankfully enough, Trexky is now working with massive national brands like Boucler and EQ3 and Labatt. And I tell them all the time, guys, this is a no-brainer win. Slide something in there, right? It's like, hey, you just ordered a meal. Put a slider in there. Did you need wine with that? QR code. Boom. Scan on the page. Uh, let's get some wine to this party, right? simple things like this. This is the low hanging fruit. And you know what? It's no one's fault to not think about this stuff because listen, it's the busiest time of the year. You guys are busy running your bit, your, your, your operations. And so we want to help you, right? And, and, and we're not just there to be your last mile partner. We want to help you guys succeed and win and own every customer. And one of the things that we found works really well is a referral program, right? Slide in a card and say, Hey, refer, use this code, refer a friend, get them to shop at Labo Tega buy online. And guess what? Delivery's on us next time, right? And now they've got some skin in the game, right? And now you've created something really special where now these aren't just customers. These are these are rebels. These are army members out to spread the word about your business. And this is what's very special about, about getting very smart around this time of the year because I'll, I'll, I'll say one last thing is, and we learned this year over year, is, is strong relationships are formed in times of need. And right now we're here to help all of our local merchants. And whether you're in a jam or you just have a hard time hiring in the hospitality industry or even retail industry, we're here to back you guys up. And so we want to build relationships with all of our merchants. And, and, and exactly what I said is exactly what you guys should be doing with your customers, right? Build relationships with your customers in times of need. And, uh, and this, unfortunately, I hate to say it, but with the economic downturn is a time where your customers may need some help, right? They may need you to get a little creative on how we're going to get those products to them. And, and I highly recommend uh, local delivery, right? Let them know that you can still bring it to them, even though they can't make it into your storefronts. Just amazing. We, we like to insert a little, sometimes a little chocolate, a little chocolate bar, a little mini panettone, so just little things like that. It's a little gift, but you know, they haven't come to the store. They haven't got to experience it. We give them a little extra and, yeah, and when it's a delivery, it's something we like to do. You know, yeah, it's fun. That's awesome, Pat. Yeah, That's it makes great. a huge difference. Yeah, it they didn't pay for something. And and sometimes they'll call. I got it. Yeah. I got a little chocolate bar in my with my delivery. No, that was a gift. Don't worry. Enjoy. Well, we'll just write. Yeah. Send it back. Send it back. We're sending a driver <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, uh, it, I mean, it, it really does. And and uh, Aloka, I love your point there. Just around. This, this is the time to do it. This is the time to deepen your relationship with your customers, the way that we hope to do it with our merchants is, is supporting everybody in, in this time. This is the time that you, you build that army. And, uh, and I love that. I love that concept. Uh, and I love the way that you, you think on that. All right, we do have a few minutes left. I, I just wanna say thank you to Pat for, for uh, making it through the, uh, the technical challenges. <laughs> Uh, and speaking so openly and honestly, and uh, and I implore you to to go to uh, go to uh, La Bottega online if you're in the city of Ottawa. Test out the delivery. Our there it is. Our um, our uh, well, one of the uh, Lopes co-founders and C and chief platform officer uh, Matthew. Uh, I think he buys. Uh, it's sort of very funny. He's very particularly. He buys your pizza sauce in like any case. Like 15, yeah, by the case. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. He <laughs> just it's so funny. You can't get enough of it. You cannot. I think he actually puts it on his cereal. <laughs> um, so let's let's talk questions here. If there are any questions from from any of you that are that are still on here, we can either do it here. You can post them in the chat. Uh, you can also then um, post them in um, in uh, by email to us, and we'll respond. Uh, we can. Uh, you can jump on and uh, and talk to our online uh, support um, chat. Uh, at any given point in time. But if you have any questions, you can throw it into the chat and I will throw them up on the screen. If there are no questions, then then we can we can head out. Uh, I'll give you one second. Um, well, let those to, let those come in I, yep. and yeah, put put in the questions, but I, I got to shout out some of our merchants that are here, some, some older merchants that maybe haven't done stuff in a while that I still have tons of props for. And I want to shout one of those people out. Matt from meetings is, is, is Maddie, if you're still there, 
Um, I want to thank Matt for being an inspiration around the power of subscriptions. Uh, they have a jerky subscription. Trexy was powering it. And I saw the value of that. And, and that was one of the ways that we got inspired as a company. Our merchants, you guys inspire us as well, right? And that's why I sit with Pat or I'll get a random phone call. And Pat, I'll answer and Pat won't even say hi. He's like, okay, listen, this is what you're going to do. This is what I've been thinking about. And he just goes right into it, right? And, and Pat inspires me. I love those calls. And, and Matt, I want to shout you out at meetings, meetings in Ottawa. If you guys haven't checked them out, incredible spot. Uh, Matt, I don't know if you guys are still in overflow, but that's, that's where I, I go to see Brad and Mitch at overflow and, and I get my, my daily fix of meetings and uh, it's, it's incredible. But uh, Matt is a, is a testament to how subscriptions can totally change the game for, for people. And, and Matt, we, we got to connect, buddy. We, we got to get you guys back up and running on that. Cause, uh, cause you guys, you guys are a powerhouse when it comes to that stuff. I see the chat. Love you too, buddy. All right. Well, it doesn't look like uh, maybe we did a great job here. We'll, we'll make this available for everybody to download uh, the deck and all of the notes. Um, you'll get an email from us as we uh, as we get that up and running. I want to also draw attention for uh, to um, if you go to trexity.com and you scroll right down to the bottom of the page, um, there's a marketing link under support. And we have a, we have a, um, all the assets that you need um, for you to use on your website. Uh, it's our merchant marketing program. And if you go to trexity.com slash marketing, you'll see it there. It has uh, images, it has a social media strategy. It has a, a request for a starter kit for your store. There it is right there on the screen. Um, the merchant marketing program, I implore you to go through and, uh, and start asking questions about that um and and start downloading some assets and and we're here to help in in growing your business so please leverage the tools that we have leverage the team that we have in order to be able to go and uh and make this a very memorable holiday season that extends into the first part of uh, 2023 um and uh and grow your business there you Absolutely. go thanks pat really thanks, appreciate thanks, it, buddy. You're the, thank you're you the man we'll talk to you guys all later thanks to everybody for joining Thanks, everybody.